William Tell. William Tell was popular with the people of his lakeside town of Altdorf in Switzerland. He was the best sailor on Lake Lucerne and the finest archer, and he hated the cruel Duke Gessler, who had been sent by a foreign power to rule and plunder the district. Tell's courage and skill made him a hero to the local people. For that reason, Gessler both hated and feared him. So to keep out of trouble, William Tell went to live in the mountains with his young son, whom he loved more than anyone in the world. Sometimes, however, he had to go down to Altdorf for supplies. On one visit, he was angered to see everyone crossing the square bowing to a tall pole with a hat on top. What's going on? he asked a woman. The Duke has ordered us to bow to his hat every time we pass it. What nonsense. I'll bow to no man's hat, least of all Gessler's. And he strode across the square with his little son running to keep up. Halt! With a clatter of armor, a group of soldiers sprang on Tell and dragged him and his son to the Duke's court. Gessler rubbed his hands with glee. William Tell, for the crime of not showing respect to my hat, I could throw you into the dungeons of Kusnacht Castle for the rest of your life. But William held his head high and looked at the Duke with a cool, calm gaze. Gessler seethed with rage. Was there no way of breaking this man's spirit? Yes, he thought with a vicious grin. Perhaps there is a way. He sat back in his chair. I've heard people call you the best archer in the land. Oh, he, he is, cried Tell's little son. Then what a waste it would be for you to rot in prison. I'll make you this offer. If you can sink your bolt into an apple from a distance of 200 paces, I'll let you go free. William couldn't imagine why Gessler should offer him this chance of freedom. The shot was difficult, but he was sure he could split the apple. So he agreed. They went to the end of a field where a young oak tree grew. The duke sniggered. Now, tie the boy to the tree and put the apple on his head. That should encourage our friend to shoot straight. Gessler grinned with pleasure as he saw Tell's face grow pale. He had guessed his weakness. He adored his little son. What would Tell do? Would he beg to be put in prison rather than risk the shot? William felt his hands tremble. What if they shook as he aimed the bow? How could he risk his son's life just to keep his own freedom? Then a small voice rang out. You can do it, father. I know you can. Don't worry. I shan't move a muscle till you've shot the apple off my head. The soldiers tied the boy to the tree. A small red apple was balanced on the crown of the boy's head. William laid a bolt to his crossbow. The child stood very still. He saw the bow leveled at his forehead. He saw the metal bolt head glint in the sun. He held his breath. There was a twang, and the apple fell in two halves to either side of his feet. His father had won his freedom. Gessler tried not to show his anger. But then a second bolt dropped from the lining of William's jacket. Why did you take two bolts, Tell? If I had killed my son with the first, said William calmly, I would have shot the second into your black heart, Gessler. That was all the excuse the Duke needed. Death for your treason. Take him across the lake to Kusnark Castle and let the beasts in the cellar eat him alive. The soldiers bound William, took him aboard the ferry boat, and set sail for the gloomy fortress. Go home, boy, Tell called to his son on the shore. Go home and wait for me. As the boat reached deep water, a breeze blew up and then a wind. Soon a gale was lifting the lake into a mass of mountainous waves. The boat plunged and rolled. The soldiers were sick, then nervous, then terrified. Only William Tell could sail a boat in this weather, cried the captain. And the others took up the cry. Get Tell to save us. Make the prisoner sail the boat. William was untied 
and he grabbed the tiller, turning the prow of the boat into the turmoil of black rain and spray. He could just make out the jagged rocks of the shore tearing the water like savage teeth. He heaved the tiller round, and a huge wave lifted the boat and dropped it onto the sharp spines of rock. The keel snapped. Snatching a loaded crossbow from a soldier, William leapt over the prow into the branches of an overhanging tree, and from there to the safety of dry land. Behind him, the foreign soldiers were swallowed up by the lake. On the far shore stood Gessler, watching in horror the fate of his finest soldiers. Dropping to one knee, William took aim across the stormy lake and fired, right into Gessler's heart. Then, through the mist, William climbed the wild mountainside towards the home where his son was waiting. Within a few years, Switzerland too broke free of foreign rule, and its people recovered their peace and happiness.